So the normal distribution will typically have the empirical rule as one of the ways to solve for the area underneath the curve or the probability. Another way is to use your z-score formula and your z-score table. You can also use your calculator. I showed you that in the finding probability video using a TI-84 calculator. All right, let's get back to this. Empirical rule. So what it refers to is your data that's lying within a certain interval on your normal distribution bell curve. So the rule basically states that from my mean, the values that are one standard deviation away represent 68%. And that mean is always in the center. Two standard deviations away from the mean represents 95% of the data. Three standard deviations away from the mean represents 99.7% of your data. You may ask yourself, well, where's the other 0.3% that makes up 100%? You can see that better if you're looking at the visual representation that's shown here. And that's because it shows the print percentages broken out. So on one side, it's 0.15%. And guess what? On the other side, it is as well. So if I add that together, that's 0.3%, which makes up that 100% of my data. So when I am constructing my bell curve, I want to make sure that my my mean is in the middle and I go out three standard deviations in either direction, okay? And you also need to know the symbols. So the symbols that you will see for mean are the X bar and mu. And for your standard deviation, you will see the sigma notation. You're gonna actually have numbers here, but this is just a quick way to identify what's one standard deviation away from the mean, so on and so forth. All right, so let's go on to our examples. You will have to construct your own normal distribution curve. I just happened to help you out and I did it for the second time so that you can answer the following questions. The first thing you wanna look for is your mean. So the mean life of the tire is 25,000. And the reason you're looking for that is because that is your center number. The standard deviation is the next thing you're looking for, which in this scenario is 2000. And that's important because you go to your mean and when you're going to the right, you're going to add whatever that standard deviation to the next number and then to that next number and so on and so forth. So 25,000 plus 2,000, 27,000. 27,000 plus 2,000, 29,000, so on and so forth. When I am going in the opposite direction and I have my 2,000 still, this time I'm subtracting. So 25,000 minus 2,000 is where the 23,000 is coming from and take 2,000 from that, that's where that 21,000 is coming from, so on and so forth. Again, you want to go three standard deviations in both directions. You also want to make sure that your information is correct because this is what you're using to answer these questions down here. So 68% of the tires will have a life between what? This is my main. I was just told with my empirical rule that one empirical rule that one standard deviation away from that mean represents 68% of my data. So therefore the answer to this is 23,000 and 27,000. And then the next question asked me about the life between, okay, 95% of all tires will have a life between what? So my mean again is in the middle, two standard deviations in either direction represents 95% of the data. So therefore, this is my answer. It's gonna be 21,000 and 29,000. The next question does not give me a percent, it's asking me to find a percent. So what percent of the tires will have a life that exceeds 21,000. So if I go back to my bell curve that I created, I'm looking for 21,000. Everything that exceeds means it's going to the right. There is more than one way to do this. So let's go back and look at, this would be the better one, I think, to try to work with. So if I am looking at my example and I see that my mean is counting one, two standard deviations to the left, what I would do is compare it to this. So my mean is in the middle and I'm going one, two standard deviations to the left. 
all of this information needs to be added in order to determine what that area under the normal uh, bell curve is. Or I personally would just take 100% of the data of what's not added. So 2.35 and 0.15, if you add it together, is 2.5. So let me get rid of this because I'm going to have to end up erasing some stuff here. And actually, I'm going to get rid of that too. So let's just keep this in mind that we're looking for everything that exceeds 21,000. So I am going to take, what did I just say, 100 minus 2.5. And if I do the math here, that's 97.5% because my answer should be in percentage. The other way that I was saying is you would take all of this and you will add it together. Well, don't be that person that does 13.5 plus 34 plus 34 plus 30. That's gonna take forever. So look above. Two standard deviations is what? 95%. So now all I have to do is figure out this part. Well, it's right there. So 95% plus 2.35 plus 0.15, which is 2.5, is going to give me the same answer. Let's go down here and just show you. Let me do the math for you. What did I just do? Okay. Another fun time with me. Okay, so 95% plus 2.5 is 97.5%. So it does not matter which way you do it, if you wanna add or if you wanna subtract it from that 100. Doesn't matter, gives you the same answer. All right, so the next, let me move this over here. So the next um, question says, if a company purchases 3,400 tires, how many tires, we're not looking for a percent this time, how many tires would you expect to last more than 23,000 kilometers. So let's go back to our bell curve and 23,000 more than is to the right. So everything to the right, again, if we are looking at this visual representation, you can clearly see we're going to need all of that information or you can do the other way. Like I said, you can take 100% of what you don't want. So we already know that this part is 2.5. So 2.5 plus 13.5 is 16%. So we know that 100 minus 16% is 84%. Let's go back for those people that want to add. And again, don't make it hard. So instead of saying 34 plus 34, blah, 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 we already know that 34 plus 34 is 68. So 68 plus, and we know that that's 16 because I just said that. So 68 plus 16 will also give you 84%. But we're not looking for a percent. So that was just to show you how to do the math, but that part is not really needed right now. What you do have to do though, is you're gonna to have to change this to a decimal. So the decimal is understood to be after the number, move it over two places, get rid of the percent sign. And so we have 0.84 times whatever is given in your word problem. Do not use the normal bell curve information. All right, so 0.84 times 300, I'm sorry, 3,400 tires will give me how many tires would you expect to last more than 23,000 um, kilometers? It's going to be 2,856 tires. Make sure you convert it to a decimal before you try to figure that answer out. Okay, on example two, the speed of cars on the road have a mean of 80 with a standard deviation of five. Your mean goes in the middle. You count to the right by fives. You, ca you count to the left going down by five because that's what your standard deviation is. Okay, once you have that information set up, now you can answer your questions. What percentage, you're looking for a percentage, of cars average less than 75 miles per hour? So 75, and this time we're going to the left. 
So I went ahead and brought down so that I brought the visual representation down so that you can quickly see it. My mean is here. If I go over one standard deviation, which I am doing, then it is going to start counting one standard deviation, this part. So we just added this on the other side, 13.5 plus this 2.5, once you add it together, it's still 16. So we already know that that percentage, that area that's under the normal bell curve is going to be 16%. Let me just show you the math for those people who might not be clear. And I'm just taking these percentages from my empirical rule but it's a, like I said, it's a percent. So make sure you put your answer as such. If cars that were going more than 90 miles per hour were pulled over, how many cars would be stopped if there were 6,000 cars? So I'm not looking for a percentage this time. So I'm gonna go back to my bell curve more than 90%, I'm sorry, more than 90 miles per hour. So that's going to be this little portion of my bell curve which represents this. And if I add that together, it's still that same 2.5%. That's not gonna change. So let's go over here. So 2.5%. I am not looking for a percentage though. I'm looking for how many cars would be stopped if there were 6,000. So what I have to do is convert that to a decimal. So that is gonna be 0.025. And then I take that and I multiply it times this 6,000. When I do that, I end up with the answer of 150 cars. So make sure when you're working with those type problems that first off you convert it. And secondly, you're using the number that is provided because sometimes they will give you two numbers, one for the bell curve like here so don't use that one. You want to use the one where they're actually asking the question, how many cars would be stopped if there were 6,000 cars? So that's the number that you want to multiply that decimal by. So when you are working with the empirical rule, which is what we just did, you, that is an estimation. When you're working with a calculator, that is the exact number. So in an, another video, if I didn't already say this, defining probability using a TI-84 calculator, I showed you those steps with that type calculator. But what if you don't have that calculator and you only have decimals? This is how you would, um, I meant to, let's start from the beginning on this one. So once you go to a graphing calculator, what you would do is make sure your keyboard is shown and go to functions. I don't know why this keeps popping up, so excuse that. Make sure you're under distributions and then normal, maybe I'm using my pen, I don't know. Normal distribution will pop up. And from that point, it's asking you for your mean and your standard deviation. Well, we're gonna use the example that we were just using here. So the mean was 80 and the standard deviation was five. So let's put that information in. Make sure you're inside of the parentheses. So 80, and it has to be separated by a comma. What's going to pop up now is you can find your cumulative probability, which in the calculator is shown as normal CDF. And it's also shown as lower and upper. But here, as you can clearly see, is minimum and max. This is what it would look like if I were going from infinity negative infinity to infinity, but we're not. We're gonna use the same word problem. What percentage of cars average less than 75 miles per hour? Less than 75 means that 75 must be the maximum number. So we're gonna put 75 for max and we see percentage is not showing up, the decimal form is. So you would either multiply this times 100 or you can just move the decimal over. When you move it over, it's going to give you like 15.8%, which is close to where we are, 16%, right? Let's go to the next one and see if we can still work with that one. So this time it says if the cars were going more than 90 miles per hour, more than 90 means 90 is my minimum now. And so this is going to change. This changes the minimum to 90. And once I take out the 75, it's gonna automatically put the, it's understood that the this is uh, infinity. And so now 
you'll see this little area that's shaded. It's if I make this a percent, I move the decimal over or either I multiply it times 100. So that's going to be 2.28, somewhere around there. We said 2.5%. Remember, this is an estimate. The calculator is the actual exact answer. So we don't stop there, though. We have to multiply times 6,000. So what I'm going to do is just change this to four digits. So let's see, 0 0.022, and I'm going to round that to eight. Multiply it times 6,000. And we are talking about cars, right? So you can't have uh, a decimal point for a car. So you're going to have approximately 137. You would round that up. This is the exact answer when you are using a calculator. So you have to make sure to follow your directions. Is it asking you to use the empirical rule? Because if it is, this is the answer you're going to be expected to show. If it's asking you to use the calculator, you would use the other one. Okay, well, this concludes my video. I ask that you please subscribe and thumbs up. Thank you.